In this video, we're going to explore the question, what the hell happened to everyone on the Citadel at the end of Mass Effect 3? This video will contain spoilers and a heavy dose of speculation, but I'm sure you already knew that. Keep watching to see it all. What's up everyone? Big Dan here. Before we begin, I have a bunch of different Mass Effect trilogy guides and lore videos on my channel, so if you're interested in seeing more, hit that subscribe button. Without further ado, let's dive right in. The Kronos Station mission is the point of no return in Mass Effect 3's main storyline, so in typical RPG fashion, Hackett tells us, For all intents and purposes, an assault on Cerberus will be the first stage of our attack on Earth. Translation, the game's about to end, bro, so go complete any side quests or other things you want to do because later they will be gone. During the assault on the elusive man's base, we defeat Kai Lang and recover the Prothean VI. Once the mission is over, we get this massive info dump from the VI. The catalyst is the Citadel. So the Crucible and Citadel together can stop the Reapers. Why couldn't you tell me this before? It was feared that if the Reapers were aware of the Catalyst's intended use, they would retake control of it. I am programmed to withhold that information until the Crucible is complete. It's as ready as it's gonna be. Let's get it to the Citadel. That may no longer be possible. Why not? The one who broke through my security protocols, the one you call the Elusive Man, has fled to the Citadel and informed the Reapers of our purposes. Damn it! Then the Citadel is in danger. The Reapers will take control of it. They already have. The Citadel has been moved to the Reaper control space. Moved? To where? To the system you refer to as Sol. Earth. Correct. The Reaper forces will now consolidate power around the Catalyst and protect it at all costs. So yeah, the Citadel is the Catalyst. And by the way, the elusive man moved the Citadel, like the whole ass Citadel, to Earth. That's a lot to absorb in 30 seconds of dialogue, and Bioware commits a cardinal sin of writing, telling us about a major plot point rather than showing it to us. This immediately raises a lot of questions. How did the elusive man suddenly seize control of the Citadel? It took Saren an entire game to locate the conduit and let Sovereign in. So how did our boy pull this off when his entire organization was crumbling, and when the Cerberus coup attempt had already failed? He just jets over there and takes the station? I want details. The Citadel was moved to the Sol system. Again, how? Did he just tie some ropes around the station and haul it into the nearest mass relay? What role did the Reapers play in taking over the Citadel? Did the elusive man shoot them a text and say, meet me at the Citadel, bruh, and bring your U-Haul? The game never answers these questions. It feels like an entire mission, or at the very least, a cutscene is missing from the plot. There had to be a better way to present such a major plot point to the player. This got me thinking, how could Bioware have shown us the elusive man taking over the station instead of just telling us? And how could they do it without adding a bunch more development time? I had an idea. What if, after recovering the Prothean VI, we received an incoming message from Commander Bailey when we returned to the Normandy? It could go something like this. Shepard, do you read me? Bailey, is that you? Shepard, everything's gone to hell here. We've lost control of the station. It's Cerberus, the elusive man. He's working for the Reapers, Shepard. Are you alright? For now, I'm holed up in the wards trying to organize a resistance. Reaper forces are patrolling pretty much every district. I'm still in contact with some of my men, but it isn't looking good, Shepard. And the Council? Any news? Negative, Commander. We've lost most of our communications. The Reapers are interfering with radio contact. It's not a total blackout, but information is patchy. They're broadcasting some sort of signal. I think they're planning to move the station. Move it? Where? Before I reached you, I hacked into a Cerberus comms channel. I overheard something about the Soul System. I think they're moving the Citadel to Earth, Shepard. To Earth? Why? No idea, Shepard. Hang tight, Bailey. We're coming for you. And then the channel cuts out and we see a cinematic of the elusive man at the Citadel Command Center. He presses some buttons and the station starts moving. The camera cuts to a shot of the whole station from space and we watch as the Citadel jettisons through a mass relay and out of sight. This is what I came up with off the top of my head on my lunch break. It's not perfect, but it's better than a single info dump from the Prothean VI. 
But hey, hindsight is 2020, and I'm sure Bioware would have loved to have taken one more pass at this script before they released the game. By the way, did you know that Mass Effect 3 was originally slated to release in November 2011? EA only gave them like 18 months to make the whole game after Mass Effect 2 was complete. They ended up getting a few extra months, and the game was released in March 2012. But still, parts of the game feel massively underdeveloped, particularly towards the end of the game on Kronos Station and Earth. Anyhow, let's move on. After the mission is over, we see a brief shot of the Citadel in orbit over Earth. The station's arms are closed. We have a brief chat with Anderson about the Citadel being the catalyst and moving to Earth. At this point, the entire map is locked out to us, except for Earth, so we have no choice but to launch the final assault. Hackett boards the Normandy, and gives an inspirational speech before he and Shepard touch base with Anderson to go over the war plan. The entire discussion revolves around how they'll get inside the Citadel via a conduit in London, open the station's arms, and dock the Crucible. At no point during this discussion do Shepard, Anderson, or Hackett inquire about or comment on the fate of the people aboard the Citadel. No questions about the Council, Bailey, or the millions of other people living aboard the station. I know most players don't give a rat's ass about the Council, I know I don't, but I find it odd that the Alliance wouldn't at least be curious if the Counselors were alive or dead. I know getting the Crucible in place is the top priority, but you'd think they'd at least try to get a situation report or make contact with someone on the station. Even just a line of dialogue saying that all comms were down would go a long way to show they even tried. The last time we heard from the Turian and Salarian counselors was during the Cerberus coup. The last time we spoke to the Asari counselor was after the fall of Thessia. After this point, we never speak to the council again, and the game never explores their fate. They were most likely aboard the station when the Reapers seized control. Many other characters we know were aboard the station as well. Commander Bailey, Arya Talok, Kelly Chambers, Thane's son Koliat Krios, as well as Jacob and Zaid, among others. What happened to these characters? We know Jacob and Zaid left the Citadel because we can speak to them on Earth. They likely joined up with Hackett's fleet before we launched our attack on Kronos Station, so they were not there when the elusive man took over the Citadel. What about Arya Talok? Assuming you completed her side quest and the Omega DLC, she contributed greatly to the war effort. We received the Blue Suns, Blood Pack, and Eclipse mercenaries, as well as Arya's Ezo hordes and raiding fleets. However, if you browse the war assets, you'll notice that Arya herself is not considered among them. She gave Shepard a bunch of resources, but isn't taking part in the battle herself. Even after retaking Omega, we can find her in the Purgatory Bar, directing her forces from afar. Maybe she managed to escape the Citadel. I'd like to think she grabbed the shuttle and made it back to Omega. We don't hear from anyone on the Citadel before touching down on Earth. And throughout the course of the mission, we don't learn much new information either. The Reapers positioned the Citadel in Earth's orbit and set up a conduit on the ground in London to transfer people into the station. Our goal is to make a mad dash for the beam so we can unlock the Citadel's arms and dock the Crucible. After about an hour and a half of gameplay, Shepard ganks Marauder shields and beams himself up to the Citadel. Once inside, we find a gruesome scene. Keepers working amidst massive piles of human bodies. Shepard and Anderson speculate on what the Reapers were doing here. You think they're making a Reaper in here? Oh, sure. They round them up on Earth, then send the people up here to be processed. Goddamn abomination. None of the bodies we discover here are recognizable. I went into photo mode to take a closer look, but they kind of just look like low-res mannequins. However, it's interesting that they are all humans, no aliens. So these unfortunate souls were likely beamed up from Earth. We would most likely find at least some aliens here if these were Citadel residents, unless the Reapers were only targeting humans. So we know the Reapers were grabbing people on Earth and beaming them up to the Citadel. But what about the millions of people who lived on the Citadel? We never learn specific details, but I think we can make some educated guesses based on what we've seen throughout the rest of the series. With help from the Elusive Man, the Reapers seized control of the Citadel and moved it to Earth. They began pacifying the station's residents with their usual methods, killing some and converting others into more Reaper forces, husks, marauders, and the like. But it's unlikely they wiped out or converted 100% of the population. There just wasn't enough time. Think about it. 
How long did they have control of the station before Shepard reached the Citadel Beam in London? It couldn't have been more than a few days. There were millions of people living aboard the Citadel, and many places people could hide. As powerful as the Reapers are, they aren't omniscient. They couldn't possibly have located every single person and dealt with them. So while Shepard is confronting the elusive man and chatting with the Star Child, somewhere on the Citadel, it's likely there are people still alive. Perhaps Commander Bailey and Kelly Chambers survived after all. After selecting a color-coded ending, it's likely that the Citadel would remain in Earth's orbit. The mass relays would need to be repaired in order to move it back to its original home. Maybe it would never get moved at all. The survivors of the attack would likely rebuild and repair their homes on the station, and perhaps the Citadel would thrive again in the aftermath of the Reaper War. The only thing we can do is speculate, because Bioware never fleshed out these details. So there you have it, what happened to everyone on the Citadel at the end of Mass Effect 3? If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more Mass Effect and RPG videos. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.